Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. To all my brothers and sisters, I wish everyone a Eid Mubarak, a great and prosperous day, uh, a day in which uh, we are able to worship Allah and spend time with our families and share some joy with others. I also um, ask Allah to accept all of our prayers from today. Today is the day of Arafah, a day of prayers and, and worship. There's just a few moments left, so we should increase that time and in turning to Allah and asking Him for His mercy that we so desperately need it in these days. Last week we began a discussion on the example of Ibrahim and we mentioned that Ibrahim's life um, and Ibrahim's example gives uh, vigor to our faith and religion. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved Ibrahim so much. He says, Ibrahim khalila. Ibrahim was very special compared to all the human beings and all the prophets. He's the one person that Allah said, I have selected him for myself. He is my beloved. So Ibrahim is the beloved of Allah and Allah was the beloved of Ibrahim. So because of that, because of who he was, because of his perfect submission, because of his amazing qualities, because of him coming to Allah on his own, Allah chose his life as an example and he filled the Quran and filled his revelation with his uh, prayers, with his example, with his family, with his trials. Um, and then Allah commanded all of us, فَاتَّبِعُوا مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا all of us, Allah commanded us to follow the Ibrahimic way uh, because of everything that we mentioned about Ibrahim. So Millat Ibrahim means the Ibrahimic way, the Ibrahimic model, the Ibrahimic path. All of us were commanded to follow that path. That's the path, that's the practical model of submission. That's the path that gives life to Surat al-Mustaqim. So, the first element that we discussed last week, there are uh, two or three elements of the Ibrahimic way, the main elements. There are so many qualities of Ibrahim, but if you could summarize them, the first one is Hanif. That's what Allah discussed when He says, Millata Ibrahim, He usually follows that with Hanif. So we mentioned last week that Hanif means um, it was Ibrahim's uh, personal life. Uh, a personal experience he had where he uh, reflected and contemplated the signs of God and creation and he came to the conclusion that he his heart he didn't want to put his heart um, his his hopes his aspirations in anything that's temporary anything that goes down anything that declines and that led him his journey led him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, so this is a journey we all need to have uh, with the creation with everything in life, we need to be Hanif. We need to not put our hearts in those things. And we need to turn to the creator of all of these things. And the summary of the uh, element of Hanifiyah was where Ibrahim said after his intellectual journey, Inni samawati wal ard. Hanifan. So this is what Hanif is. I turn my face away from everything and turn it towards the one who originated uh, everything. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the second uh, path in Ibrahim's journey was his submission. That's our topic for today. He was the perfect submitter. He was the one who exemplified what submission is. There is no better example of submission to God than Ibrahim alayhi salam. So, the first thing is you have to recognize this was a natural step in his journey. After he realized the finality of life and the uh, state of uful or temporariness of every creation, uh, Ibrahim realized there is only one being that's permanent and that's the creator, the originator, the sustainer, the master of everything. Once you come to that realization, and that's an intellectual journey, you use your mind to come to that. Allah wants us to use our minds. And once you realize that, then there's a next step that has to come. 
And so many human beings, they recognize the Creator, but they don't take the step. And that step is now that you realize that there's one Creator, there's one Sustainer, there's one power in the universe, one order in the universe, one structure in the universe, and the universe is in the hands of one being, one all-powerful being, then you have to submit to that, uh, to, to Him, to that Creator, to, to that Rabb, to that Lord, Allah Azza wa Jal. So the second step is called Islam, and it means submission. So we understand Islam and Muslim as, as identity cards. Um, but in the Quran, they're not really identity. Islam in the Quran generally does not mean the religion of Islam. Sometimes it does, but usually Allah uses it in its meaning, uh, what it represents, which is submission to God. So Ibrahim, he used his mind um, to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he came, he realized the limits of his mind. And now he needed to submit. He needed to worship Allah. Now he was in need of guidance, and the guidance came from Allah. So this is very, very important. So many of us, um, we, we have a different approach with submission. We want to submit to God on our own terms. Uh, we want to bring our own understandings in there. So it's very, very important. Allah wants you to think. To under, it's very, very important to understand this. Allah wants you to think. Allah wants you to explore the universe. Allah wants you to come to Him willingly. But once you come to him, then that thinking has to stop. Now you realize the limits of your intellect and your mind. Now you realize, now you need to know what to do. You need the guidance. You need to worship. You need to be told. And that comes from Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's a promise he made to the first human being that he's going to be sending his guidance to human beings throughout um, their span in this, in this earth. So Islam is that second step. Islam is that second step we all have to submit and the submission is with the heart. So the Hanifiyah it comes from the mind um, but the submission comes from the Qalb. And the Qalb is in Islamic terminology that's where you make conscious decisions and uh, you know where it's, it's tied to it's tied to the mind in some respects but um, your intention is the why behind what you do. Uh, so, Islam is an act of the heart. You submit with every fiber of your being. The heart is the center of your soul, the center of your nafs. So, Islam is that next step. And that's what Ibrahim exemplified. He was such an amazing example of submission. Um, Allah talks about it again and again in the Quran. You know, when you're impressed by somebody, when you're impressed by an example, you never stop talking about it. And when you read the Quran, it seems like every few pages there's the example of Ibrahim alayhi uh, salam in every, in various aspects of his life, in various lands that he lived, in various trials that he endured. Um, Allah says in one verse, "If qala lahu rabbuhu aslim," when his Lord said to him, "Aslim." Now Ibrahim is speaking to us. He's speaking about his beloved Khalil, Khalilullah, and he's speaking. Not to him, he's speaking to us. But he's mentioning his example. He's saying, <clears throat> Whenever his Lord said to him, Aslim, submit. What was the response of Ibrahim? He immediately said, and he said it in the past tense, I have submitted to the Lord uh, of the entire universe. So this is the submission of Ibrahim. There is no thinking here. So when the command of Allah comes to each and every one of us, this is not the time to start thinking, oh, wait a minute, does this make sense? Wait a minute, is this going to be good for my situation? Wait a minute, can I do it on my terms? Wait a minute, I want to do this. I want to follow the commands. I want to pray. I want to fast. I want to wear hijab. I want to wear uh, or follow the Islamic norms of dress and modesty. But let me do it on my terms. Let me do it on my understanding. Let me think about it. That's not submission. Allah says when Allah commands submit, submits, commands human beings to submit, the perfect human being in submission, Ibrahim, he says, he's, he, did, he didn't say, yes, I will submit. He didn't say, I am submitting. He said, Aslamtu li Rabbil I have submitted. This is my life. 
you just have to command and I will be obeying his, your command. So this is this is Ibrahim's submission in a nutshell. Um, it's so amazing uh, the trials that he endured. Um, look at his life and look at the example of or the command that he was given to leave. Uh, well, before that, uh, Ibrahim was one of those people that had a long life, but he had no children. So he lived most of his children, almost 80, 90 years without any progeny. And that's something he really wanted. So he uh, asked Allah, he made dua to Allah to grant him progeny. He said, Rabbi habli min mina salihin. Rabbi habli mina salihin. He says, oh Allah, oh my Lord, grant me um, from the righteous progeny. And then Allah immediately answered his prayer, فَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِغُلَامٍ حَلِيمٍ So look at Ibrahim's submission, immediate. And look at Allah's prayers, sometimes they come immediately. So Allah answered his prayer and gave him the good news, you will have a forbearant child, you will have a prudent boy. And then, so this was, you know, um, another great test for Ibrahim. It was one of his great desires in life. He had very few desires in life. He wanted people to worship Allah. He wanted to worship Allah, and that's what was enough for him. Well, some of the few desires he had was to have children. That's a human. That's a natural human trait. So finally, after eight to nine decades of life, Allah granted him a child. And then he says, "Falamma balagha ma'ahu sariya." When that child was old enough, so when when you immediately have a child, you're filled with joy. And then the first few weeks and months are very tough. But when that child reaches a certain age, you really begin to enjoy your children. So then the command came to sacrifice that child. So think about that. Uh, you know, a, a, a fervent desire you have in your life, you finally get that wish. And then that child grows up to that age, you begin to enjoy them. Now in Allah's wisdom, Allah's divine wisdom, uh, because Ibrahim is special. Ibrahim is the Khalil of Allah. And that Khalil does not deserve to have his heart attached to anything else. So now Allah commanded him, this is a time, or Allah, uh, a dream came to him, and he saw in a dream that he was sacrificing his child. And he interpreted that dream as a command from Allah, that he has to sacrifice that boy. Now, did he hesitate? Uh, no. Uh, but he did go speak to his son. And he said, Fandur Mada Tara, he explained the dream to his son. And he was testing his son. And he said, uh, what do you think? Um, so he's testing his son at some uh, level. And of course, he intends to obey. His whole life is submission and obedience to Allah. Um, and then his son says, Qala ya abat. What a beautiful answer from a son. May Allah may give all of us children like that. That's such a rare treasure in life. To have children that outdo you in worship. The children that have this kind of response. He said, my dear father, do what you are commanded. You will find me, inshallah, from the, those who are steadfast and patient. So this is really, really amazing. Uh, a res an amazing response from an amazing son of an amazing father all submitters to Allah Azzawajal. and then the father and son they go out um, and they intend to carry out the sacrifice and when the knife comes out and when they're they have demonstrated that both of them father and son are Muslim they are people who obey Allah they come to submit to the commands of Allah Allah says, Falamma aslama. When both of them submitted, aslama. Watallahu lil jabeen. And his forehead was on the ground. Wanadaynahu an ya Ibrahim. We called out, O Ibrahim, Qada saddaqta ru'ya. You have fulfilled your vision. Uh, you have fulfilled the vision. You have passed the test. Inna kadalika najizil muhsineen. This is how you reward those who do good. So this was something so beloved to Allah, this perfect example of submission um, and this great trial that probably no other human being went through a trial like this. 
but he passed the test. Every moment of his life, Ibrahim was tested, and he passed the test. Um, so this is amazing. Allah loved this submission so much. And فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَتَ اللَّهُ Then at the end he says, إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ الْبَلَاءُ الْمُبِينَ this is a great trial. This was a great test and a trial for Ibrahim. Uh, and we ransomed him with a great sacrifice. So, then Allah begins to praise Ibrahim. Peace upon Ibrahim. That's how we reward those who do good. He was from our slaves, the believing slave. And then, وَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِإِسْحَاقَ نَبِيًّا مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Then we gave him news of another son. Uh, and then uh, the story continues. وَبَارَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَىٰ إِسْحَاقَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِهِمَا مُحْسِنٌ وَظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ مُبِينٌ Then Allah says, we bless both children with great families and great prophets uh, in their lineage. And from their descendants were many who were like them in fulfilling this task and submitting to Allah. And some of them were not. So this is an uh, unbelievable example of submission. And this is the kind of submission Allah wants from all of us. And that's why he mentions it in the Quran. And tomorrow is Yawm al -Naha. Tomorrow is the single greatest day of the year. And that day in some way is linked to this sacrifice, this uh, submission of Ibrahim, his willingness to sacrifice his son. So because from that time we have this continuous tradition of sacrificing animals in the name of Allah. Uh, we eat animals anyway, but this is a great sunnah and a tradition of prophets, of the Prophet Ibrahim, that we select uh, some animals that are in good shape, that, uh, we, and, uh, that we like, and we offer them to Allah. Uh, and offering them to Allah is just, it's not really... It's not about the blood. Allah says that it's not the blood um, and it's not the flesh that reaches Allah. It's the taqwa. Allah wants you to follow that same submission. The same thing like Ibrahim was commanded to sacrifice Ismail. Uh, and it was not really, it was just a test. Allah wants to see where your heart is. Allah wants to see that you are Muslim. You are someone who submits to the commands of Allah. And when you pass the test, that's what it's really about. Same thing with these animals. We eat these animals. We sacrifice these animals. It's not that we're giving them away. We bring them and we enjoy the meat. We enjoy the food. We share it with our friends and our family. And we also donate uh, for, towards the needy. But this is for our own use. Allah's not gaining anything from that. But this is just an Ibrahimic tradition. So tomorrow... Uh, in some way commemorates this great sacrifice of Ibrahim. And this whole story is about Islam. It's about submission. So really, we need to reflect over these things. Uh, and So don't reduce Islam to the name of a religion. Don't reduce Muslim to an identity that I'm a Muslim as opposed to a Christian or a Jewish. This is just a faith, something you take off on a census. It's just a cultural thing. These are concepts these have meanings they have such amazing meanings the quran is filled with what they mean what they are so the story is filled with the word islam and the word muslim and it doesn't mean that they were followers of a certain faith it doesn't mean that they were people of a certain religion it means that they submitted to their creator and this is the kind of attitude and, and demeanor we want to have look at the other uh, another example of a submission when uh, the same son prior to this, uh, after Allah gave him Ismail, Allah commanded him to leave Hajar, the Ibrahim's wife, and the mother of Ismail, and this baby boy, mm -hmm. infant boy, mm -hmm. in the middle of a desert. Allah directed him to a place, and he commanded him to leave them there. And that's another great story. Um, and again, the, the wife, Hajar, and she also said similar words that, if this is a command from Allah, then you'll find me submitting. Um, so, and Ibrahim confirmed, yes, it's something Allah is commanding me. So Allah commanded him to leave them in the middle of a desert. Uh, there's no city there. There's no civilization there. There's no water there. There's no veg vegetation there. It makes no sense uh, from a human perspective. But this is Allah's 
uh, wisdom, his command, Ibrahim and his family passed the test. And it's something amazing. Look what happened. You know, these days, you know, are about, you know, what happened in that in that barren region. Uh, Ibrahim made a dua when he came back. He said, uh, or later on, he made a dua. Rabbana inni askantu min dhurriyati biwadin ghayri di zara'in inda baytik al-muharram. So the story uh, we're going to summarize. Um, eventually, uh, the well of Zam, the water of Zamzam came out, and that uh, gave them sustenance and nourishment, and that attracted other people. And Hajar, she secured the well of Zamzam, and she made her charitable institution, uh, where she shared the water with others. Eventually, other people settled, and eventually became a small city. So Ibrahim, he visited it periodically. So he made a dua at some point uh, later on. Rabbana inni askantu min dhurriyati. Oh Allah, I made some of my offspring settle uh, in a barren valley near your sacred house. And at some point in the story, Allah commanded them to build a house. Uh, and they built the Kaaba. Uh, that's a story for another day. Um, so Ibrahim made this dua and he said, Rabbana li yuqimu salah. Faj'al af'idata min al-nasi tahwi ilayhim. Warzukhum min al-thamarati la'allahum yashkurun. Uh, Ibrahim said, oh Allah, you know, I said, I left my family in the middle of a barren valley near your sacred house in order to establish your worship, your prayers. And so he made another dua. And that's another, look at all the duas of Ibrahim. That's a something all of us should do. Look up all the dua, all the supplications that Ibrahim made and look how they bore fruit. Uh, and all of us are witness to that. So he made a dua here. He said, Fajr al Af idata min al nas. Oh Allah, make the hearts of people incline towards them. And he towards those people and towards that area. And then, Warazukhum min al provide them with fruits of, for, for their sustenance so they may be grateful. So, what is this barren valley? Today is the holy city of Makkah. It's a city that's in all of our hearts. It's a city that invites people. Um, so many of us were invited, um, but we couldn't go. So Allah willed that some of us, I mean, we had, some of us had plane tickets, some of us had plans. Every Muslim wants to be in that place. <laughs> Ibrahim's dua, thousands of years ago, make the hearts of people inclined towards that place. We see that today, billions of Muslims, 1.2 billion Muslims, their hearts beat in the direction of, of Makkah. We pray in the direction of the Kaaba. So this is all from the sacrifice of Ibrahim, from his submission. Because of the submission of Ibrahim, we have so many gifts. We have this Ibrahimic way. We have this path and model. We have the city of Makkah. We have our Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, who was from the progeny of Ibrahim from his prayers. And we have the Kaaba, we have our Qibla, we have the name of our religion, faith, Islam, and we have who we are, Muslim. Everything about us goes back to the submission of Ibrahim. We owe so much to him. So let us not reduce those things to tokens, to names, to identities. Islam is not a name. Muslim is not a name or identity. These are real concepts. So we need to revive those concepts. That's a challenge of faith. Don't make it routine. Don't change it into habit. Don't change it into ritual. But live that life of the prophets. Live uh, the example of the prophet. Know what Islam means. Know what takbir means. Know what all the things that we say in our prayers. Know what they mean. They're such amazing things. These are the days of uh, tasbih and tahmeed and tah tahleel, uh, where we say, La ilaha illallah. Those are amazing concepts. We say, Allahu Akbar. We say, Subhanallah. We say, Alhamdulillah. Let's learn what these things really mean and not just make them slogans or words that we utter without meaning. So, this is, these are some reflections on the submission, the perfect submission of Ibrahim alayhi salam. That's the submission we need in our life. So Ibrahim, just to summarize, um, 
you know, there are three qualities that led him on this journey, this journey of faith that he had. There are three uh, qualities that we had that we all need. Number one, Ibrahim was a thinker. He thought about things, and all of us need to be smart, intelligent, think about things, look around us, reflect over signs. And that thinking should lead us to this conclusion, to the second step, which was Hanif, Hanifiyah, the step or the second process of Hanifiyah. So first we use our minds, and then that should lead us, if our minds are not corrupted by other things, to realizing that everything in the world is temporary, and there's only one being that's permanent. So that uh, is the second process, Hanifiyah. And then that leads us to the third process, which we talked about today, is Islam, or submission to Allah. Once you reach to this conclusion, you arrive at the door of Allah, now you need to submit. And that requires a different process. Now you're not questioning or thinking. Now you're ready to submit, like Ibrahim, to every command of Allah. Uh, may Allah answer our prayers. May Allah uh, alleviate the suffering of Muslims around the world. This is the precious day of Arafah. There's about 15 minutes left, so all of us should uh, make dua in these 15. Make dua for me, make dua for your friends, your family members, make dua for the Ummah that's suffering today, um, and make dua for our situation that it reverses, our massages are opened up again. Um, and tomorrow is the day of Eid. It's a sacred day, the greatest single greatest day of the year, the day of sacrifice where we commemorate this great sacrifice of, or willingness of Ibrahim to sacrifice, and then the sacrifice of the ram that he did. Uh, may Allah give all of us a, a joyful Eid. I wish you all Eid Mubarak. May Allah accept all of our prayers. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.